Hey everybody, I'm Tony Morrison with GLAD and I'm talking icons with Sony Music Group with the one and only, the iconic, Iniko. Wow. Hi. How are you? I am fantastic. I am not just fantastic, I am many things. I'm overwhelmed. Very much elated, surreal. This is all surreal yeah. for me. So I think all in all, Fantastic. It's been a big year for you already. Right? We were talking just before the cameras were rolling about taking things one day at a time mm -hmm. and granting yourself gratitude and peace and receiving that gratitude Receiving and the peace. things, yes. It, I feel like it's very easy to like worry about all of the other things that can happen. Well, I think we're built to worry, go, right? Hello? Yes, it's like so easy, but like, like you said, it's like a muscle, like receiving, being in the present, working it. So that's what I've been doing. This is gonna be a fire chat, I can already tell. Mm -hmm. When you hear icon, what words come to mind for you? Change. Mm. I think that's the biggest one for me. I feel people, things, moments that are iconic or people that we see as icons always bring forth some some kind of change that like just shifts the entire like facet of what we know like our reality to be and usually for the better. Do you feel that word change has been a hallmark for your life and craft? Yes, I know that I am I'm not who I was like last year, let alone who I was yesterday because every day I am changing. Every day I learn something new about myself, about others, about different circumstances. And I do think that it is important for us to pay attention to those things because it, it's a big part of how we grow, how we become better. Said absolutely perfectly, as a Scorpio would say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Scorpios are signs of change. Yes. It's true. It's true. And when we talk about iconic people, who comes to mind for you? Okay. This is literally the, f the first name that came in my head because he is genuinely a, my biggest inspiration since I was like three years old, Michael Jackson. I think about him and I just get so sad that I never got a chance to meet him. But I do think maybe I have in a dream before, in a moment in time, uh, he is probably the biggest inspiration for me just as far as like what he stood for and the messages in his music. I know that there are people out there who do indeed like put these messages that are about, you know, being better people and being better human beings, but I don't think anybody ever did it like Michael Jackson did and his team of people and Quincy Jones, all of these people like that is an icon to me for sure. Yeah. Well, to look at the depth and reach Hello. of music, period. Yeah. But to see how someone you'd never met has impacted you so. Right? It's interesting because before he had passed, like, he was a massive, big, big, big deal to me. But when he died, I went into, I was definitely depressed. Like, I was not okay because even though I it affected didn't you. know him, you you feel like you know artists because you know their music and our music is a projection of ourselves. Yeah. And I just kind of just did this deep dive and like studied him and studied everything that he had done up until that point, like including like, you know, his artist development and granted like the way that it happened, like I don't think that needs to happen for artists, but like I think artist development in general was like a big, big step for me, like in my career, I started doing that in um, 2017. Mm -hmm. That's when I started developing, because uh, I've, I've been singing pretty much all my life. Yeah. Um, but I think that was a that was a big part for me because like, yes, he's like super duper talented, but like he wouldn't have gotten where he was if he stopped doing what he was doing. Like he was always consistent, consistently performing, consistently singing, consistently dancing, doing it over and over again, getting that exposure therapy so that you can get to the point, get to the places that you wish to be in. It takes practice, gotta be consistent. Working in the music industry, yeah. 
things tend to move very quickly. <laughs> Have you had a chance to, to maybe think about of that, that impact and how you are and can be that impact for so many people who are consuming your music? I think about it every moment of every day. I have thought about it ever since I knew that ideas and concepts and how we understand things held so much weight to how we move and walk in society. And it always, always confused me when, you know, people just aren't nice to people or, you know, treat people as less than human simply because of who they are. And a big part of that is because they are limited to what they know or what they wish to know. And a big part of that is being aware of what you're doing and why you're even doing it. I think a lot of people are so used to just doing, they don't know why, they don't know the intention behind it. I, I have to think of why I do everything that I do because I, am aware enough to know the power that I hold and the power that I have. And I know that there's someone, many someones out there who just need that one line, that one visual, something that literally like lights up a fire inside of them to create these ripples that become waves and really bring in change. What put you on this path at a young age to pursue music and to be the Aniko that I'm seeing in front of me? That's a good question. So music runs in my family. Um, my, I was telling you, my sister, she is an artist herself, artist developer, manager, songwriter, producer, all of everything. She's everything and that comes from my dad. He is a big, big music connoisseur also probably one of the smartest people I know and uh, he's a lead singer for a reggae band called uh, Soul Jazz. So I kind of just grew up on music but I don't want you to think it was like, it wasn't extremely diverse, it was specifically like the greats, like grew up on a lot of, aside from like reggae, third world, uh, Bob Marley, all these people, uh, there was Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Beyonce. I remember like he had like a CD and literally like if you wanted to listen to anything else, he was like, nah, you're gonna listen to this. Um, on top of that, uh, gospel too. I, I grew up in the church. I was a very avid uh, church goer. Outside of that, I didn't really have an outlet for my music. So uh, it just, it, I poured it all into uh, worship essentially. Um, my first solo, I uh, was five years old <laughs> and I sang happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> and I remember too, when we were having like the choir rehearsal and I, I was, you know, even before then I was always just like, you know, I'd sing to myself. I was always singing all the time. And one of the youth leaders came up to me and they were like, would you like to sing the solo? And I was like, okay. Would I like to? <laughs> sure. Yeah. What, whatever you need me to do. I was so nervous I remember I was like shaking but like this was me the whole time I was holding my chest yeah. like this I didn't look at anyone I was looking straight at the clock happy birthday Jesus I heard somebody go oh not the awe <laughs> right? it, was, it was um but that was the first time that like even though I was nervous I I just had this urge to do good and not just for me but because I knew that that message needed to be heard in some way. And um, since uh, leaving the church and uh, separate, separating myself from that, the message, the impact, what it is that I am here to do became even greater. I, I firmly know that it is God that pushed me away from there to protect myself. Um, I did experience many things uh, whilst being a part of that. And it was a big part of how I even identify as who I am right now. I think that for, I will use the word us, because I also grew up in the church as well. 
when you come into a place into your life where you really put it all out there. Yeah. And there is this this tenant of beautifully wonderfully made within your craft, your music. Mm. Just so you know, that's what that's what I get when I listen to your work. Wow. Um, Thank you. When it comes to your queerness and your identity, mm. what was that evolution into your music like? I mean, I will say, really, in, in your Instagram bio, in all caps, genderless. Genderless, and yes. Sure, that's a marker, but I read that and I felt power in that. Yeah, so I went to an independent fundamental Christian school. So fundamental is, uh, they're the ones that uh, pick it, you know, outside of the abortion clinics and things like that. Uh, I was there for five, six years. They did like this whole witch hunt with me uh, because I kissed this girl. Um, at her house <laughs> and they found out because uh, it's a weave of connections, these uh, organization, these people. And um, two weeks, it was two weeks that they like grilled me every single day, like telling me like, we know that you did it. And of course, I'm not going to tell them that I did it because I was like, well, my dad has spent so much money at this school. Like, you know, I don't want to like it was my senior year and like they were genuinely trying to expel me. <laughs> I was just like, I just feel like it's not even that serious. Wow. I didn't have a choice but to take a step back from who I thought that I was because it made me realize that who I was was this mold of who I was told to be. I didn't mold it it was other people and so i kind of was just playing the role and when you play a role and you are someone well you're me and you're that like self-aware and knowing that you are playing a role that we're all playing roles until we truly like say who am i i um i didn't have a choice because they were telling me that who i was isn't okay and that i was gonna burn in hell so of course, like, you say that to a conscious, living, breathing human being, someone who feels things and, you know, has those and feels those and experiences those emotions, of course, I'm not going to want to be that, this thing, this person that will burn in hell. And it's like, clearly, I'm not anybody else. So I, after that, I, I was, um, I spent two, three years, like, just not wanting to be me and um uh in those years i i ended up taking like a sociology class and wow they brought up you know the i not the idea not the concept but the absolute truth that gender is was constructed and that the gender binary that we know today didn't truly exist or was uh, enforced until uh, colonization. And that before um, colonization, before Europeans, all of these people came to these African and indigenous spaces and places, people like me just existed. Like, just, they were being. And um, they didn't just exist. They were the shamans. They were the people that you went to. They were the medium between this reality and the divine, what we know to be God, God's universe. And it it kind of like clicked for me. Like, I was like, wait a minute. Well, we, they speak about God in the sense that he, he is this and he is that. And But if God is as big as we say that God is, then how can we possibly confine God to two things, either a man or what? It's God. Well, it's it? universe <clears throat> bigger than. Well, it's interesting you bring that up. I, I always think about it as, you know, if I myself, mm. knowing all of my flaws, mm. are capable of understanding people unlike myself, loving people unlike myself, does not also God have that ability? 
<laughs> and I laugh just because it's Hello? like, like I think about I'm a pretty so flawed person, and I'm like, if I'm it. capable of that. Come on. Yeah. And you know, you talk about breaking molds. Mm. This is a lesson for you in receiving. But I think you're in this place of creating your own mold mm. through your craft, through your music, through your art. Do you feel like you're a bit of representation you didn't have coming up in the world? Yes. What happened happened, and I, I can't change it. And I'm extremely grateful to every single thing that I experienced. I don't, I don't regret anything because regret means that I regret the things that came of it. Everything that I went through is the reason why I am able to talk to you and exist as I am today. And I know that I'm, I'm not just the person that I needed when I was a kid. I am the person that people need to see in order to be themselves, in order to exist regardless of how society sees them. And I say society because society is just this thing. We operate in it yeah. or outside of it. It's up to you. You have that choice. And a lot of people think that they don't. And that is what holds you down. Like you, you are your only confines, truly. How you wish to live and how you want to live and who you want to be, that is, that is your life purpose, to exist. Iconic lyrics. Mm. I will be one of the greatest. That is a vow. Yeah, that is a promise. Baba. Lyrics from your hit, King's Affirmation. Yes. What does that song mean to you? It means power. It means magic. It means manifestation. It means life and death and rebirth. It is the, the core of what it is that we want to be, that we want to do. I can tell you now I, I didn't know what to expect. Because I have anxiety, I, I, what works for me is like not expecting too much so that if anything happens, Not even I'm low not expectations. Like, oh yeah, it's just, it's just gone. Yeah. Like that I'm just right here. <laughs> I'm just right here yeah. in the present moment. I don't know what to expect because I'm here with you too. Those lyrics like, they kind of came to me like a bullet, really. I, um, at the time, I was experiencing a lot of ignorance mm -hmm. and mean comments online. Um, it was the first time that I had like experienced that like in a way where I guess would be cyber bullying or whatever. It was like a you know like this. It's it's usually like not a lot, yeah. but it feels like a lot because like just based in neuroscience, like we take negative things more to heart than like positive things. So even though I was seeing and ex been seeing all these like positive comments, um, there were negative ones. And uh, this was before the song was, you know, even out. And I, I don't remember what it was. I think like one of my covers or something had like gone viral. And uh, usually when that happens, it's like an influx of more people. So it was just a lot of like misgendering happen happening and um i can't speak for folks who do not uh who don't uh identify with the gender they were given at birth but for me when i am misgendered it feels like uh the same way it feels when you know something really bad is about to happen and it's like it your heart drops into your gut and i guess I feel that way or felt that way, still feel that way when it happens because I, I know myself and I see myself and I see everything that I am. And to know that I can walk and move and exist in a world where someone looks at me and they don't see that. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I really had to learn to move and breathe through because at the end of the day, it is not my job to open people up who do not wish to be open. Mm. My job is to simply give folks the tools that want to open up, because I, I can't open you. I can, I can be the catalyst, but it's not up to me. It's up to you. And thank you for going there oh. and sharing that. And, I, and sharing is one thing, how being misgendered makes you feel, mm. but being able to articulate that yeah. is also I, I think just a strength. So just thank you for 
going there. It's not easy. Of to, it's, to, it's not. You're already putting yourself out there, but this is so personal to you. I think too, because a lot of people don't know how to express that feeling that they feel. Totally. And we all have questions. We're all still questioning. We're also learning about ourselves. But being able to articulate that, I think that's a huge power yeah, and strength. Yeah. Speaking of power and strength, who, who do you want to be an icon for in the world? I was just going to say everyone, because that's the truth. Everybody. I, I don't... I can't say that I have a particular audience because I do believe that everyone simply wants to be seen and heard. And I know that the only way that can happen is if you see and hear yourself first. And in order for that to happen, you have to ask yourself those questions. Who am I? Why am I? Those are the people that I want to reach I, I know that I'm here because I, icon, I understand, I receive, but I also want people to know that like, you can be iconic too. You probably already are and you don't know it yet. It's just a matter of being aware, completely self-aware that you, you have that power inside of you to do all the things that you ever wanted to do. It's possible. So perfectly said. Yeah. And Nico, thank you for existing. And teaching others to do the same. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.